Thank you to all of those who read and helped prepare our sanctuary space this past week. If you would, please read along with me in the 13th chapter of Mark, starting at verse 24. But in those days, after that suffering, the sun will be darkened, the moon will not give its light, and the stars will be falling from heaven, and the powers in the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in clouds with great power and glory. Then he will send out the angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of heaven. From the fig tree learn its lesson. As soon as its branch becomes tender and puts forth its leaves, you know that summer is near. So also, when you see these things taking place, you know that he is near at the very gates. Truly, I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all these things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But about that day or hour, no one knows, neither the angels in heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. Beware, keep alert, for you do not know when the time will come. It is like a man going on a journey. When he leaves home and puts his slaves in charge, each with his work, and commands the doorkeeper to be on the watch. Therefore, keep awake. You do not know when the master of the house will come, in the evening, or at midnight, or at cockcrow, or at dawn, or else he may find you asleep when he suddenly comes. And what I say to you, I say to all, keep awake. May God bless the reading of God's holy word. Please pray with me. Loving God, may your words be heard, not mine. And may those words change us to further your kingdom. Amen. So being the oldest of the grandchildren. As a teenager, I was often given the responsibility to watch over the younger cousins. So one afternoon in particular, the adults left me in charge while they attended a funeral. But before my babysitting duties, I visited the medicine cabinet. I was suffering from the common cold and thought that some over-the-counter medication would weaken my runny nose and cough. And I was going to be chasing these children around, these five hyperactive children. I needed to be at my best. And you know what it's like when cousins get together. It's total mayhem, or at least it is at my house. So it was important to be at my best both mentally and physically. No cold could get me down. So just minutes after the adults said their goodbyes, and I was officially on the clock, my eyelids began to droop, and then the muscles throughout my body reduced in speed. My neck and legs and arms moved as if in slow motion. You know that feeling. Immediately, I knew what I had done. I recklessly ingested some nighttime cold medication, and it was too late. But I had to fight the urge to sleep. I was in charge. Standing, it helped for a little bit, but I would eventually sway myself into sleep. And I tried moving around the house, encouraging the kids to move with me, making a game of it. But they decided on a quiet game of Candyland. Those ice cream slopes and gumdrop mountains could not keep my attention for long. I eventually allowed my head to just lean back against the wall ever so softly and let the diphenhydramine take over. Now, although that day I gladly accepted my babysitting fees, I did not deserve it. I was not able to stay alert. No matter what I tried, the slumber advanced and I, the person left in charge, was totally unaware of my surroundings or any safety precautions. 
But yet the most unfortunate part of it all was that that precious time that I dearly cherish with my cousins, it was neglected. I missed out that day. Now on this first Sunday of Advent, the church starts a new liturgical year. We begin with a season of preparation, expectation for the coming of our Lord's glory and power. With the excitement of singing Christmas carols and decking the halls here in our sanctuary, we're met with this unexpected apocalyptic text from the Gospel of Mark. Now, this is why I prefer to look to the lectionary readings. We're compelled to examine those challenging scriptures that we might otherwise ignore or just pass by. And a message of Advent, it's, it's found in these verses, though. But it's set within the middle of Christ's passion narrative. So beginning in verse 11, I mean in chapter 11, Jesus starts to reveal himself as being the very temple and living presence of God. And this idea it is communicated in the following four chapters. So, you know, we know the story. Jesus enters into Jerusalem. He is uh, declared by the crowd, son of David. He proclaims his divine incarnate identity in the temple, their teachings. He curses the fig tree. He speaks of the parable of the vineyard. And then he announces the rejection of the cornerstone. Now these events are established to challenge the hypocrisy of the religious leaders of the time, the Pharisees and Sadducees and scribes and Herodians. But here in chapter 13, where we read today, the setting and the audience changes. Jesus, he's no longer among the large crowds in the city, but he's with his inner circle of friends, the disciples. And Peter, James, John, Andrew, they have some questions, as anyone would who hears Jesus prophesy these things to come, a temple destruction and false prophets and chaos among the nations. And then in the text that we read, Jesus begins to warn of the suffering that will happen and the darkening of the sun and the moon not giving light, and the powers of heaven shaken. Pretty scary stuff. These words, they lack the motivation to get us in the mood to sing some Christmas carols, Joy to the World, or Santa Claus is Coming to Town. So where is the message of anticipation and peace? Well, if we look in verse 31, Jesus says, Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words will not pass away. This promise, it expresses the very heart of our faith. The reason we as a community of Christ emphasize hope and love during this time of year. The fears of today, the turmoil and confusion of our lives, it will pass on. What is to come is far greater. Jesus has come. Jesus is present now and will come again. Three different times, Jesus advises us, beware, keep alert, keep awake. In his final words to us in verse 32, he says, But about the day or hour no one knows, neither the angels in heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. And then following these words, Jesus delivers the parable of the doorkeeper where the slaves and the doorkeeper eagerly wait for their master's return, or at least they should be. The call to watchfulness for the Messiah's coming is the gift of this text for us. It's easy to become complacent with the mundane customs of this season. We allow the mindless frenzy to dull that illustrious shine of our preparation of the coming Christ. But there is more. There is better. But we have to be observant. We do not want to miss out this Advent season. We do not know the day or hour. Therefore, we must live in mindfulness of a future beyond human knowing. So let us stay awake and keep alert 
for Christ this season. Let's pray. Heavenly God, we thank you for your words this morning. We ask your help. Help us, encourage us, push us to stay alert, to keep awake for you this season. Let us not miss out. It's in your name we pray. Amen.